I want to be Dirty Dan. What makes you think you can be Dirty Dan? I'm dirty. I'd say I'm Dirty Dan. I'd say I'm Dirty Dan. Which one of you fellers is the real Dirty Dan? Uh, I am? Ladies, gentlemen, and monsters of all ages are coming right up on the release of the remaster for Monster Hunter Stories 1, and thanks to the lovely people over at Capcom, I've had some early access to the game. So today, leading into this release, let's go over what's new coming to this remaster, a number of different tips to help get you started off early if you are new to Monster Hunter Stories, and then just my general review of how it all feels. Starting off then, there are three major new additions to this remaster, four technically, one of which is the museum mode, which I am only supposed to show a limited amount of, but this contains over 200 pieces of artwork and music for the game, some of which has never been released before, and a fair amount of it is also coming with developer comments on it about different characters or areas along with art, and it's honestly really quite insightful and cool to look through, and I'm just a really big fan of this edition personally. Another major addition is a whole load of new character customization options, including being able to take the facial features, hair, and sometimes even voice of different characters from the game. My personal character is Dan Jr., who is Dan's son, getting through the world on nepotism and I still can't get over that I've been allowed to do this, but this applies to a number of different characters and is honestly quite a neat feature in its own right. Past that, the game is now fully voiced in English and Japanese alongside the original Monster Hunter language, which just really adds a fair bit of immersion to the story in my opinion, and for a game with the story literally in the name, the story is quite a big part of it. Then the final major new thing is mostly just new for those of us in the West, but we never actually had the post-release DLC come out on this side of the planet for the original Monster Hunter Stories, which includes a number of monsters, full-on Elder Dragons, and a number of other cool things that are now just part of the remaster from day one. So you can look forward to having an immediate post-game after you finish the story itself that will be new to even those who played the hell out of the original version of Monster Hunter Stories 2, and that's pretty cool as well. Moving on then, let's just go over some tips and tricks, things to understand to help you integrate just into the systems of Monster Hunter Stories for someone who has not played the game before. First things first here, your monster is the star. Especially in the original game, outside of very niche setups, the majority of your offense is going to come from the monsties that you use, not from your player, from your hunter, or I guess your rider. While there are ways for players to get skills that boost their own damage, such as attack or critical eye, you are mostly always just better focusing yourself on essentially being a support for your monsties, on making them able to be stronger so that they can do more. On a similar note to that, if you are really struggling for whatever reason, especially as you get into the mid game and beyond, I recommend picking up the sword and shield. This weapon has the ability to block attacks, not just for yourself, but also for your monster later on in the game, which can just be incredibly impactful. That said, I wouldn't recommend worrying too much about min maxing or anything like that, at least until the post game section. And even then you definitely can get through it with a non-perfected team. The best way to experience stories as far as I'm concerned is just with the team of monsters that you most want to take on your journey. The ones that you like the most, though I would recommend some general guidelines to go with that when it comes to your party. Early on, especially, one of your first goals should be to get a monster of each of the three attack types. You are given a speedy velocidrome by default, Aptonoth are commonly found nearby the starting area and are power based, and if you get lucky with early eggs, you can even pull something like a Yonkut Q for your technical attacker. But having one of each of these is actually really important, as even more so than it is in Stories 2, this game has enemy monster patterns that are just extremely learnable and they repeat very often, particularly predictable once you've done the fight a couple of times. And that means if you are willing to learn and have one of each monster available type-wise, you can get through most anything in the game. Past that, however, there are also elements to consider, as different monsters will have their own elements, especially later on. And even if you have an advantageous attack type, if you are at an elemental disadvantage, you're not going to have a good time by any means, really. On a similar note, there is actually a way to boost each monster's power individually, which is if if you wear either a weapon or the armor that matches the monster that you are actively using, their special moves will simply cost less to use manually. This can really help in certain scenarios, but honestly I just love the concept that this baby monster is actually scared of you and willing to do these moves earlier and cheaper than they probably should because you are literally wearing their family members in front of them, a neat mechanic that is double to be aware of for the very least for sure, and it's worth noting as well that these bonuses don't stack so wearing the same monsters weapons and armor doesn't actually help you, 
it's better off to split 50-50 so that you can actually boost two different monsties in combat. Then finally, and this one is well known to anyone who played the second game as well, pay attention to both the patterns on the eggs and to what Navaru says when you are picking up eggs as well. For example, if he says that an egg is smelly, that means that it probably has special genes inside of it. But even on a more basic level, egg visuals are defined by their patterns and their colors. The pattern that is on an egg defines the monster type inside, like herbivore or flying wyvern, things like that. And then the colors that are on it give you a better idea of what is inside it within that type. So if you're after one very particular monster, a little bit of basic deduction can actually get you a decent idea of what their egg might look like if you are happening to look at it right now. So if you want to know what's inside of an egg, just think about it a little bit along those categories and you can probably work it out for the most part. And that's just about it then for the actual more sort of beginner tips for the game. So finally, I just want to answer the very simple question, how is it? And the answer is the game is just tons of fun. If you liked the original release of Monster Hunter Stories, this plays nearly identically as far as the gameplay goes, but has updated graphics, multiple languages of voice dialogue, a whole lot of bonus information in the museum, as well as a whole lot of art that you've just never seen before from the game, and the whole set of post-release DLC already installed upon release. If you played Stories 2, but never got around to playing Stories 1, then this is also the perfect time to dive into the game. After all, plenty of people who played both of these games still hold that the first one is actually better, and I think I agree at least on the front of the story itself, if not about the somewhat simpler gameplay that the game has. That said, there are also people, of course, who have just never played a Stories game before, despite being massive Monster Hunter fans, and again, the first game, this remaster of it, is just the perfect place to enter, especially now that it has been remastered, and this remaster is just easily accessible on pretty much every major system as well, which fixes another problem that we had with the original release of Monster Hunter Stories, which was that originally it released only on the 3DS for the most part, with a little bit of mobile release after the fact, and now is basically just the first time that's not the case. That's more or less everything that I wanted to talk about. Then everyone, as a remaster, this game does an just, just an excellent job. It modernizes the visuals, it adds some fun bonus content to the game, it adds some post-game content that we never got to do in the West, and it adds behind the scenes stuff as well, which is really cool to see. But for the most part, the actual gameplay and story remain precisely the same as they originally were, which is honestly exactly what this should always have been, really. So as a remaster, I do rate this game quite highly, and I definitely think that it's worth checking out for any Monster Hunter fan at the very least. Like if you liked the video, subscribe to the notification bell for more, and most importantly, ladies and gentlemen, until next time, stay sweet. Josh, Cotton, and Hollow with the videos, dropping the humor like a hammer on your tippy toes, bringing entertainment on a daily arrangement to take our insanity and turn it into entertainment. Yes, I said entertainment twice, to reiterate that it is nice, to look into your faces on a mostly daily basis when you let us in your homes to make the whole world a stage is, uh, goodbye.